Hey, hey, all right, we are back with another thought for today. Anytime you want to do something, my best advice as a coach would be to put a timeline on it. And here's why. Every time I made a big change when I, when I wanted to change something with my eating, change something with my fitness, there would be a level of anxiety that would come up about that because what I was afraid of is, well, if, if I, you know, I do this and it doesn't work, then, then how do I know when I need to take, you know, go back to doing something else? Or, um, you know, if I do this and I don't realize that I'm kind of going in the wrong direction, how will I know? A lot of fear and concern about ending up on the wrong path and not knowing when to turn it around. Or um, if I were to go in that direction and I realize I'm actually not you know, I'm actually making, uh, reverting back in some way. How would I know? So I found that the way around all of that was no matter if I was changing a food thing or a fitness thing was to put a deadline on it and to mark it actually on my calendar. So if, for example, I, and I did this a while back, I did a cup, I think I did a month of no sugar, no flour. I just wanted to see how I would feel. I just wanted to try it. So I marked an actual month off on my calendar and I knew that on this date, I could reevaluate, go back through my notes, check and see if I was liking what was happening and make a different decision, right? But I had that deadline and here's how that works inside your head. Oh my gosh, I kind of miss this. I kind of miss that. I don't know if I can live this way forever. Is this something I'm willing to sustain? It's all these questions, right? Well, I only have to make it to the 30th and if I don't like what I'm doing, I can stop. I don't have to keep going. Knowing that that was the cutoff point for me, that it gave me that opportunity to reflect, assess, and make a decision is huge. I have a client right now who is working on wanting to become more mindful with her eating. So what she wanted to do is block out two weeks. She wanted to work on journaling her food in a different way where she's focusing on hunger signals, why she's eating, and not to even put weight loss as a focus for a few weeks. And it kind of made her antsy because she came to me for weight loss, but she realized she had some other issues she needed to work on first. So I said to her, well, look, what if we put a timeline on this? What if we say we're gonna go 14 days of doing this behavior? Immediately the anxiety reduced because she knew she didn't have to be perpetually thinking, oh my gosh, I should be losing weight. Why am I doing this? She knew she was taking a two week hiatus from weight loss, focusing in on these goals. And then on the 22nd, I put down in my notes that we were gonna rediscuss and see if she wanted to switch her focus and her goals. Because she has that point, she can relax into the process, know that she's gonna go back and evaluate her notes, know she's gonna have a discussion with me, and we're gonna refocus her on what she thinks she needs at that time. So anytime you wanna do something, a different way of journaling, a different type of physical activity, uh, a different calorie amount, a different whatever, give it a timeline. That way you know, one, you can relax into the process and that there's a point at which you will stop and you will make a decision if you wanna continue, which means you actually get to fully experience it. And, and two, it gives you a point of reflection and switching it up intentionally. Whereas if you go, I'm gonna do keto, I'm gonna be vegan, I'm gonna be that, and it's these very general blanket changes, and there's no deadline, and you feel like you're floundering, you have nothing to hold on to. But if you say, you know what, I've heard a lot of good things about being a vegan, I really wanna give that a go, but I don't know if it's really for me, right? you chart out three weeks on your calendar. You say, I'm gonna give this a go for three weeks. I'm gonna honestly submerge myself into it. I'm gonna really try this. And if at the end of the three weeks, I find it's not for me, I pivot back. It's giving yourself the control and the power. It's realizing that nothing has to be forever. You're trying different things as you progress. Here's the cool thing. Somebody said to me, hey, Heather, I love seeing you being able to change. Keep in mind, you don't get an option. You're gonna change. Here's how I know that. Your body is aging, <laughs> whether, whether you want it to or not. So the you at 35 is not the you at 45 and it won't be the you at 55. Your body forces you to change and adapt because it ages on its own without your consent. So change is required. 
The question is, is are the changes you're making ones that you really want to do and you will sustain happily? And the only way you know that is to give yourself a fair window to try things out and see if you like it without judgment, without expectation. Just go ahead and give it a go. But that deadline of time, that is not contingent on outcome and it's not contingent on anything else. It's just you chiseling out a time frame and keep it small at first. That way you're not feeling overwhelmed. So I hope this little coaching tip helps. Remember, anytime you want to try something, set a timeline. I'll talk to you soon.